than a record number of holiday travelers. When it comes to air travel and airline food, commentator Larry Cohen has some food for thought. On a recent flight to the South on a major U.S. airline, I had requested a special meal for lunch. Inadvertently, along with my lunch, the flight attendant had given me the card on which all of the other kinds of special meals were listed. It was quite inclusive, to say the least. The possible special meals included the following. Kosher, Hindu, Muslim, vegetarian, lacto-ovo vegetarian, diabetic, low-sodium, gluten-free, low-fat, low-calorie, and finally, bland. I began to wonder just when the airlines had become flying restaurants serving meals that one might prepare at home or possibly be served in a hospital. And what is the purpose? The average flying time of a domestic flight is slightly over two hours. If the flight were to last right through the passenger's normal meal time, couldn't the passenger carry a little food of the type he is used to on the plane just to tide him over until he landed? The list of special meals could be ever increased to include all various combinations of the aforementioned. For example, kosher vegetarian or Hindu bland. Have we become a nation of gluttons who will starve to death should we miss a meal while we traverse the great expanse below? My advice to the airlines is to get rid of all of these meals and tell their passengers to eat before they take to the air. In the event of an unforeseen delay, passengers could be fed a snack that would meet the requirements of all of the categories. And my advice to the passengers is to expect this to happen, since even if the airline executives don't happen to listen to this, they will certainly listen to their accountants when they tell them just how much the service costs. We are a nation of immigrants, and we all should be and are allowed to eat what we want, when we want. But when we are in the air to get from point A to point B, we should not force the airlines to feed us exactly as we might expect to be fed on the ground. It would not only expedite the travel, since needless time would not be wasted by having to load up these planes with hundreds of special meals, but the cost to the passengers could be reduced. And maybe a little bag of generic airline peanuts would taste pretty good once in a while. Larry Cohen lives and writes in New York's Mohawk Valley. It's good company. It's the WRVO stations. President Clinton's appointment this week of Bill Land Lee